This is Scott. And this is Dina. And these are their five pugs. We have Milog, who's the oldest, and Lily, Huggy, and Apple, that's four. And one foster pug. And his name is Joey. He's nine. The five cute little pugs share one unflattering Ooh. habit. Poop eating. A uh, massive problem. She has poop on her chin. And if that wasn't enough to deal with, Dina's dog, Huggy, and Scott's dog, Milog, don't get along. Huggy. <laughs> and the owners have taken sides. Huggy's just out of control. I've seen Milog start fights, so it's not just Huggy. <laughs> but are the dogs mimicking the owners? Or is it the other way around? The biggest argument we've had is her just constantly taking on a new foster and not having a break in between. It's good to hear that you can acknowledge that Huggy does things wrong sometimes. Your dog's not perfect either. We have one to two pugs too many. My ideal number of pugs would be three to four with four kind of uh, pushing the envelope. Dina, however, is passionate about fostering pugs. She's an adoption coordinator for a pug rescue group and tends to take her work home with her. The latest is Puppy Mill Rescue Joey. This is Joe. Got it? They've reached a stalemate, and the dogs are going wild. This family of seven needs immediate help. Luckily, help is at hand for Scott and Dina. Expert dog trainer Victoria Stillwell is on her way. In her 13 years training dogs, she knows just how important it is to have owners on the same page as one another. What a lot of dog owners don't realize is that the way they behave directly influences their animals, and inconsistent owners make for insecure dogs. To get a full picture of the problems, Victoria's first day will be spent observing the dogs and Scott and Dina. Hello. Hi. Hi. Hey. Come nice on to in. meet you. Nice Hi. to meet you. Thank you. Hello. Hi. Hi. I'm Scott. Nice to meet you, Victoria. Welcome to our house. Thank you. So? Here to talk about the pugs. Where, where are they? Have a seat. We'll, uh... OK. To try to keep a lid on the dog fights, Scott and Dina introduce the pugs to guests one by one. Oh, hello. Pug. <laughs> hello, Pug Pug. This is Milog the Fabulous. Hi. Oh, we're we're in the wrong wrong color. Color. Beautiful. <laughs> so Milog's eight years old. She was the alpha dog. Now she kind of keeps to herself, but one of the other pugs likes to attack her a lot. Okay, and you say she eats? She likes old poop. She likes the staler the better. Stale old poop. Yeah, mm -hmm. she likes the hard stuff. That's that's her preference. <laughs> Okay, all right. This is Lily. Hi. She um, was our third Hello. pug. Hello, Lily. Well, yes. Hi. She's our third pug, probably the worst poop eater ever. She'll and catch it as it's coming out of Milong's butt. <gasps> yes. Don't you be licking me. <laughs> Eating it already this morning, so be careful. I love pugs, but poo eating pugs, they were all over me. Licking my face, licking my hands. Ooh. <laughs> She's like, what's wrong? All right, okay, so this is two, the other mm -hmm. one. And this is Apple. Apple Bapple. Apple. Hi, Apple. Do you eat poop as well? Yeah, she likes oh, it my... soft too. Well, they all eat poop? Yeah, every single one of them. Dogs can eat their own poo, and that's actually quite normal. It just doesn't fit well with our society, and yeah, it's gross. There are lots of health issues involved with dogs that eat poo. All right, um, get the other one. one. They tend to pick on Apple a little bit. And this is, oh. This is Joey, oh. he's our foster dog. Yeah, he also oh. goes by the godfather. Joey. So what's wrong with his, uh, what, oh my God, our, what's that? Joey and what, what happened to him? Joey's from a puppy mill. And uh, when he came to the rescue, he had a damaged eye and um, a broken jaw and, um, rotten teeth. Puppy mills are such a disgusting places. Mm -hmm. And that is a small example of what they do to their dogs, purely for profit. People go to pet stores and they buy these cute little puppies. 99% of the puppies that you see in pet stores come from puppy mills. You know this. Yeah, I mean, we can't urge it enough in the rescue, you know? Yeah, I get you, Joey, I get it. <laughs> All right, we'll bring... Okay, well, the next one is the worst one. Huggy Buggy. It's a little bad. Huggy. 
Now notice me log stays nice and calm. I'm okay with this. <laughs> so this is Huggy, and Huggy. she's our fighter. Huggy. She fight. She picks a fight. This time, Huggy doesn't have a chance to get to Milog because Victoria wants to first see all of the five dogs' main offense. I would like to see some of this poop-eating behavior. I'm interested to see how Dina and Scott deal with their poo-eating pugs. I know that they've tried things in the past that haven't worked, but I would like to see it from my own eyes. Wow, they've got a great backyard. Yeah, it's nice and big. Ooh. So do they lap it up as it's coming out or after it's touched the ground? They like to follow each other around as they see one about to poop and try to catch it, but they'll lap it up as it's sitting around. So either way is fine. Yeah, they don't really care. We've tried a lot of things, the medicines in the store, the um, cayenne pepper, cayenne pepper, the meat tenderizer. A little we've Tabasco heard. sauce. Tried it all. Just makes it better. Kind of desperate with it, mainly because of the illness. You know, we don't want them to get sick from it. Of course. The dogs have a fondness for poop, but not necessarily for each other. But, but just put her down. Can you put her down? Back inside, Huggy finally has a chance to have a go at Milag. She, but she, Huggy fights with Milag. Yeah. Mila, come here. Whoa, 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 whoa. All right, stop, stop. <laughs> let's, let's take, so that happens every time you pick up Mila. This, this is what you get. And she'll, she'll stare at her until you're done. <laughs> So what have you done before to discipline her? Um, I mean, separate her. But she has to follow her until she's finally had enough. I think you're a bully. I don't think you're Alpha at all. You're a bully. I, I like that. So you're saying Huggy is a bully. Huggy is a bully. Mm, what do you think of that, Dina? Uh, Huggy is more your dog? Yes. Scott, do you say she's a bully? Oh, she's a bully. You don't, don't say I, that. I agree. It's a much better word than Al. I agree with completely what you said. We I agree didn't... she's a bully. It's just you always look to me like Huggy's this horrible dog. I you think know? you like, take it personal. You egg it on. You'll pick up me long, pet her. To show you that Huggy's I, issues. Yeah, I know it. So you don't have to like point it out and look at me like. There's not many times that I'm lost for words. But I think Dina and Scott, it's almost like the dogs are secondary to all their arguments. Victoria discovers the source of Scott and Dina's quarrels. Scott never wanted five dogs. She brought animals into this house under manipulation. Hey, you I can't help that, that you you're me, gullible. Me log is the only one she acknowledges that's truly my dog. That's what you said. So the other 80% are her dogs. So I do 20% of the responsibility. Scott's 20% rule is ridiculous. Does he really think that I'm gonna come in and let him get away with that? Absolutely not. I spread across probably, you know, 5% here, 5% there, probably much more than 5%. Well, gosh, aren't you great? Coming up, problems between Scott and Dina. He knows how to administer. It's what to administer. Do you have trust issues? Yeah, oh, yeah. And problems between Scott and Victoria. Scott, is that your normal position when Dina's feeding? The more I do, Dina's just gonna bring another foster into the house. Dog trainer Victoria Stillwell has been observing the problems of Scott and Dina's five pugs. Hey! And the problems between Scott and Dina. I think you take it personal. You egg it on. Observation continues, and Scott shows Victoria the lists Dina leaves for him when she's out of town. Give half a tablet of allergy relief in the AM, or put the half tablet of allergy relief in cheese. But if you could cut out the cheese, that's calories cut. 
We're still on Milog. Give one tablet of brewer's yeast in the PM. Give a quarter of the glucosamine and chondroitin tablet in the PM. Give one drop of cyclosporin into the left eye in the PM. Please make sure that you wipe Milog's butt each time she comes inside from pooping. Dina leaves extensive notes for Scott with what to do when she goes out of town. And uh, in one way I can understand it because she doesn't trust him. But in another way, come on, it's full on. What other grievances do you have then? What's, tell me what else is going on. Well, just I've asked him to give meds before and he's messed it up. To see how capable Scott really is with the dogs, Victoria asks to see him in action with the dog's medication. All right, tell him what to do and then you do it, Scott. You're gonna do Milog's eye drop in the left eye, one drop. Okay. Okay. And then you're going to give a quarter to Joey. Come on, baby. No. But before Scott can even get started, Dina's already checking in on him. I don't know. I'm sure he can pick her up. I didn't know he was bringing her out here. Without a jaw, isn't it? There you go. Good. Okay. Have you any criticisms of what he did just then? No, he did pretty well. It makes me feel good. Okay. He's definitely <laughs> got the way. All right, wait a second. He's... He knows how to administer, it's what to administer. Okay. Do you have trust issues? Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. You do? Mm hmm. I think Dean is very controlling. She's a little anal about everything, and I don't think she's really allowing Scott to do many of the things that Scott could do. Scott might be capable with the medication, but feeding is left to Dina. Can you show me how you feed them? Yeah, sure. Huggy, Milog, and Lily are fed in the garage. Kind of try to feed them a little separately, given that Joey has issues and the others do. And we've been trying to feed them a little slower so that they, you know, don't scarf it down. So we do. By the time one gets to another bowl, it's empty. Okay. All right, let me see how you feed um, Joey. Joey is our foster pug and he has several issues of his own. Um, the current issues are that he's food aggressive. To keep a lid on his aggression, Joey is fed separately. And if I run out of time, sometimes I put a little applesauce in his food just to moisten it, or I'll microwave it with water. I suspect that Joey's had to really fight for his food in the past, and that's why he's showing aggression when Dina goes close to his food bowl. Scott, is that your normal position when Dina's feeding? No, I feed them um, five meals and five breakfasts every week. During the week, Monday to Friday, you, you do all the feeding? Okay. He does, except Joey. You feed the ones you own, but you don't feed the foster dogs? Talk to Dina why I don't feed them. All right, wait a I mean, second. You don't want to have the foster responsibilities. I don't. Again, it goes back to the more I do, Dina's just gonna bring another foster into the house and the situation's gonna even be more out of control. I think that's an excuse. And I feed and you know the dogs what? that I own and we're responsible for. The foster is something Dina choose to do on the side. Dina, do you not accept that when you brought in the foster, you I said mean, I, I have take accepted full that. Yes, I've accepted that when I get Did I choose I to him. foster this animal? Just to prove a point, Scott is not gonna feed the foster dog. Isn't it just common sense when you have a foster, a dog that's been through hell in a puppy mill for eight years, that you'd want to do everything in your possible power to help this dog? I think is very wrong. It's going to be hard for me to work with him. I work with fosterers. I work with dogs that have been abused. What's your and point? And for you to sit there and say, I feed the others, but I don't feed the foster dog because Dina was the one who wanted the foster dog, so therefore I don't feed see, it. You're missing the entire point. I see you sitting there on the sofa saying what you just told me. Look at you standing there with hands on your hips. God. You want me to be here because I'm going to walk out right now? Just let it go. 
Do you want me to be here to help you? You do what you need to do. Are you just gonna sit on the sofa? Uh-uh, I'm gonna do what you want. You asked me here to help you. Please do. Every single dog, whether you've asked it to come in this house or not, is your responsibility too. Way to go, Scott. <laughs>
I don't get as much enjoyment out of um, bathing the dogs as Dina does, um, but I'm okay with doing it. Great job, everybody. We've got a poop-free yard and clean dogs. So now it's time for some training. Poop eating in the yard is a massive, massive problem. And I want to train the dogs to leave the poop on your command. And this is all about setting your dogs up for success. Now, why have I got these flags in my hand? No guess. I want to teach the dogs to leave these flags, because eventually these flags will be associated with the poo in the garden. One by one, the dogs need to be taught to stay away from the flags. Oh, Lily, <laughs> what are we gonna do with you? Come here, my darling. Whenever the dog turns away from the flag, Victoria rewards it with a food treat. Now I'm just gonna produce the flag and I hope she backs away. Good girl. Good girl. Next, Scott and Dina have a turn and Victoria introduces the next stage of the technique. Every time the dogs go near the flags, Scott and Dina will tell them to leave it in a firm tone. That's it. Good. Good girl. As you present it, say, leave it. Leave oh, it. okay. Yes. Leave it. Good girl. You can put it more in front of her face. Okay. I mean, really, get her to leave it. Okay. Leave it. Good girl. Leave it. Good girl. Leave it. Well done. Fantastic. Now all the dogs know the leave it command. The next stage will be to apply the flags to the poop. Coming up. Now normally when you release Milag, Huggy goes over and nails her. Release Milag so Milag can do what she wants. Dog trainer Victoria Stillwell has been working with Scott and Dina's five poop-loving pugs. Good girl. Earlier, Victoria taught the dogs the leave it command. Leave it. Good girl. Victoria hopes this command will help keep the dogs away from the poop whenever Scott and Dina can't clean it up in time. Now, this is where you watch like a hawk. Okay. She's going around there. Here she goes. It's her spot to poo. poo. Okay, and look who's following her. Tell leave Lily it. to leave it. Leave it. That's it. Leave it. That's it. Be good. Good. The most effective way to stop a dog from eating poop is to clean it up after they've gone. But five dogs all pooping at the same time, that's an almost impossible task. So I've introduced a flag system. So if Scott and Dina can't clean it up right away, they need to flag it. I think one might be pooping in the back. Okay, so stop there. Put a flag in there now, near the duty. Yep, here we go, here's another poop. Okay, we got poop. Leave it. Good. Scott, roar. Leave it. Good, let's back away from it. Because I think this is such a severe problem, I think you do have to be pretty harsh. It's better that the dog is a little fearful of the flag than it ingests poop and gets parasites, worms, or a disease. Lily did try to sneak over there a couple times, but, uh, but we were pretty quick on our toes. It's a real success. A combination of prompt cleaning, flagging, and verbal commands. Leave it. Good mean none of the dogs eat any poop. You are stuck with the most difficult behavior habit a dog can have to break. It is going to rely on you being vigilant. It's not easy to get one dog to stop eating poop. It's extremely difficult to get five. Leave it. This is going to be a tough problem to crack, and Scott and Dina better stick to their guns. This could be in our wildest dreams here. Do you ever think that they will just leave it? To be realistic. And there's no point in saying, yeah, a few years time, it'll be fine. It might be, but then again, it might not. Okay. Yeah, in a way, do they have to fear the flag? Yes. 
At least they have to see the flag as a back off. Don't go near this flag. We're going to keep our hopes high. Should we go inside, pugs? Come on. Keeping on top of the poop problem will be a huge job. As well as dedicating themselves to the flag training, Scott and Dina will need to work as a team. Because they found this difficult in the past. Did I choose to foster this animal? Victoria wants to help them learn to trust each other. What I want Scott and Dina to realize is that by working together, they're going to make their lives and the lives of their dogs much better. Well, I bet you're wondering why I brought you to a rock climbing wall. I want you guys to trust and really support each other. No more of this constant, exhausting bickering back and forth. That's why I want you to climb this wall. But there's a catch. Your inner arms are going to be joined together, and one of you is going to be blindfolded. So you are really going to have to rely on the other person and trust the other person to get you up the wall safely. If you don't listen to each other, you won't be able to make it. Well, I'm scared of heights, so this should be interesting. Once Scott and Dina are harnessed up, they're ready to tackle the wall. OK, you guys can start climbing. Great job. Grab that one. Take your left leg straight up. Now pull your body weight up and bring your right leg up higher, right leg up higher, over to the right. OK, that'll work, that'll work. Uh, bring your right leg up a little bit to the right. Over, there you go. I was a little nervous, given I'm scared of heights. I really believe that Dina and Scott climbing this rock wall together, trusting each other, is going to help them work together in the house. You good? Yeah, just you grab it. I don't need it. You're almost to the top. Bring it up, up, up. There you go. Dina, that's it. You've got to the top. Okay. You're good right there. Okay. Do you trust Scott? Yeah. Good. Now I come back down. I want you to take what you've learned doing this, climbing this rock wall, back to the house and use it when you're training your dogs. All right, you can come down now. Well, I think I'll trust more that Scott will do a, a good job with the, the dogs. Fantastic. Yay. Good job. All right. You did it. With Scott and Dina now working together, training continues back at the house. Victoria's next goal is to take the heat out of the dog's feeding frenzy. These balls are designed so that it breaks up the food a little bit, so it's actually the dogs eat a little slower. I want Scott and Dina to create a calmer environment around feeding time. Uh, you feed Huggy first, don't you? All right, well, I'd like you to make her sit. Wait. Huggy, free. Now let's do it with the next doggy feed. Lily, sit. Well, Lily's doing a good job. They can get their faces in these. Yeah. Never Much seen less. you all go so slow. Much less frenzied. I love it. OK, great. Let's go and feed um, Apple. Apple. OK. And um, Joey. Joey is showing signs of food aggression, so I want to change the way he is fed. I think it's better that he comes out of his crate because sometimes small areas can exacerbate aggressive response. I had the opportunity to work with Joey and I literally started off holding the bowl and putting my hand inside the bowl. Now, I would only do that with a, a food aggressive dog that has no teeth. Joey has no teeth, so I know that I'm going to be safe. I'm not going to be bitten. He responded very well. Make him look at you first. Call him. Joey. That's it, good, good. Now the next time, put a bit more in. I'll put like five or six pellets in, quite a nice handful. Feeding Joey by hand from the food bowl shows Joey that people's presence near his food is not a threat. OK, Scott, could you come and take over this feeding? I think Dina and Scott need to share the responsibility of looking after their dogs. I don't think it's going to be a 50-50 split, but I think Dina needs to do less and Scott needs to do more. That's it. Take your hand out, hold the bowl, and now you can just pet him a tiny bit. I think in the puppy mill, he never really had to eat around humans. I think they just stuff, stuff his food in the crate and then leave. So when a human does come near his food, he gets defensive, protective of it. Now you're, you're building up trust. And after a while, he's going to be associating people with his bowl as a good thing rather than a bad thing. 
you can pull the rest in. There you go. I definitely had a big part with Scott not helping as much. This has helped me to, to realize that he is definitely capable of helping more with the dogs. Now that Scott and Dina are working together with Joey, Victoria wants to address the couple's other bone of contention, the fights between Dina's dog, Huggy, and Scott's dog, Milag. It's really important that Huggy associates Milag's presence something positive rather than a negative. So good things happen to both dogs when both dogs are together. This technique is called positive association. You teach Huggy and Milag, but Huggy in particular, that good things happen to Huggy when Milag is around. I'm gonna take Huggy and I'm going to walk her out. And then when she comes into view again, could you treat her? And Scott, could you do the same with Milag? Okay. All right, Huggy comes in. <gasps> good. Girl, Huggy. Oh, that's a very good sit. Now, Scott, if you get Milag's leash um, and do exactly the same thing. Okay. Good girl, Huggy. Lovely. All right, pick Milag up. Good girl. And keep, that's it, keep feeding. Good And girl. sit on the sofa with Milag. Girl. Oh, together. Girl. Yeah. That's okay. That's a good lick. We like that lick. Yeah, girl. Let's try you giving me like some fuss. And Scott, let Huggy have a look. If you think Huggy is gonna go, take her out. First of all, we're gonna bring Milag down. All right, you're gonna be in the middle now with Milag. Let the leash be relaxed. That's all right. Looking good, Huggy. Looking good. Now, Scott, if you could drop the leash okay. and sit on the sofa, always be ready, but let's just drop the leash and see. Now, normally when you release Milag, that's another trigger. Huggy goes over and nails her. So, release Milag, so Milag can do what she wants. Very good. That's all right, showing the butt. That was lovely, we like that. Huggy responded incredibly well. There was none of this psychological domination that she does when she stares. She offered her butt actually to Milag at one time, which is a great pacification signal. And I was surprised. But you know, hey, Pugs are pretty intelligent. Good, good job, Fantastic. Huggy. Coming up. I want to see you working together, presenting this united front. When Victoria leaves for a few days, Scott and Dina don't stick to the training. Chew it up. What is she eating? Poop. I don't see the flag. I never put a flag down. Dog trainer Victoria Stillwell has been teaching Dina and Scott how to stop their five pugs from eating each other's poop. Leave it. Good. She's also helped the worrying couple smooth out some complications of their own. Now pull your body weight up and bring your right leg up higher. Do you trust Scott? Yeah. Good. I'm leaving for a few days and it'll be really interesting to see how Scott and Dina work together in my absence. Your challenge for when I come back is this. Keep on going with the flag training, with the leave it training. I would also like feeding time to be a time when all dogs are fed together. Scott, that's gonna be on you. And when you are doing the feeding time, to do the hand feeding with Joey. Work with Milag and Huggy doing the removal technique, cutting down the incidences and the triggers of fights. Finally, I want to see you working together, presenting this united front to demonstrate to your dogs. You have the consistency. Your dogs will have the security. And I'll see you very soon. Okay, all, all right. right, thank you, bye. Bye guys, see you later. Victoria left us homework. The poop eating's gonna be the most difficult to, to stop or even get under control given how long they've been doing it and how much they, they love food, even though we don't think poop's food. It's day one for Scott and Dina without Victoria, and they make a start on countering Huggy's aggression towards Milog. I'm gonna put Huggy down. Mm -hmm. It seems like things are going well. Gorgeous. Oh, that's gonna be a fight. 
But they might be moving too quickly. Come on. Take her out, Scott. After a timeout for Huggy, they try again. And this time, she remains calm. See if you can put her on the ground and rub her belly. Good girl, Huggy. Good girl. It's OK for me long to get love. A few days later, Victoria checks in on Scott and Dina's progress. Leave it. Leave it. Leave it. All right, chow down. Come on. Jojo. All things said and done, Scott's actually doing a really good job. Outside in the backyard, Scott and Dina are working together to combat poop eating. I'll do the flag, you treat them. They all are over at me with the treats. All right, then you do the flag, and I'll treat Here, give me some treats. Leave it! Leave it! Leave it! I told you to use a firm tone with your dogs, not shout at them. I don't think they really are processing the word leave it. I think they just hear there's a loud voice. What is she eating? Poop. See how effective the flag program is. What are you doing? Of course they're not going to respond if you do it like that. You're confusing them. Coming up, Victoria returns to set Scott and Dina straight. Leave it! Dog trainer Victoria Stillwell has been checking in on the progress of Scott and Dina. Wait. Good girl. She's been impressed to see Scott helping out with all the dogs. Leave it. Leave it. But things haven't been going smoothly in the backyard. Chew it up. Get it. Chew it up. What is she eating? Poop. Victoria comes back to Scott and Dina's home to discuss what she has seen and to make adjustments to the training. First of all, with Joey, tell me about the food aggression now around his bowl. He's had a, like one or two episodes of growling. It is just a question of keeping on hand feeding him. On to the next thing. I know you're having trouble with the pooing. But I wouldn't say anybody really has the concept of leave it. Lily seems petrified and just kind of sits in her own little corner outside. And several times, I haven't even seen her go to the bathroom when I've taken them out. Mm -hmm. No, I mean, I think we just, we definitely need help with the flag system. Dogs will listen to intonation, fur, boom. It's an unemotional, mm -mm. and I think that's something that we have to work on. OK. Um, the fact that Lily is walking around, this doesn't look like a, a dog that's traumatized. She's peeing, which is great. A, a dog that's really terrified of going out in the yard wouldn't even be peeing in the yard. I think it's important to keep your tone. So it's not, leave it, leave it, leave it. No, it's like, leave it. It's a, I really mean business here. I don't want to freak you out, but I mean business, and you have to listen. Leave it! That toe was better, Dina. The clearer command has an immediate impact. <laughs> she is listening to you now, no doubt about it. Good she girl. got it, fantastic. Lily even backs away from the flag without being told. Good girl, Lily. Yeah, I mean, that's what I mean. She's got Good it. Girl. That's what we want. So, hey, it is working. I know it's a lot of work for you both but you're getting there. Now I think we need to reinforce her too. When the dogs leave the flags and poop, Scott and Dina should now reward the behavior with a toy. Apple. I think this is great because it'll keep her in a smaller area and it'll also keep her occupied. It was so great to see you and Scott working together. And it's also great you kind of giving Scott more trust. Yeah, I definitely feel a lot more comfortable. Thank you so much for coming and helping us. I, I really appreciate it. You're very welcome. The dogs needed it and we needed it. I'm definitely happy. I can just see us getting even better every day. I just want to commend you with the training you've done. Thank you. With the respect that you've shown these dogs getting in there, working with Dina, earning Dina's trust. Good job, and carry on with the training. Thank you. And you know. Thanks for all your help. You're very welcome, and these pugs are worth it. 
I'm glad that Victoria saw the progress that we made and she was able to probably leave with a better impression of my involvement, you know, that I have with the pugs. When I first met Scott and Dina, I saw no consistency between them and the way they worked with their dogs. Consistency is key here. By working together, they're going to make their lives and the lives of their dogs much better. Having Victoria come into our home and help us with our dogs has been a wonderful experience. Victoria, thank you so much. It, you've done wonders in our house. So thank you. Thanks for watching. If you love It's Me or the Dog and want more dog training tips and tricks, visit my official site, Positively.com. And if you're interested in learning more about becoming a dog trainer, check out the Victoria Stillwell Academy. Links to both sites are in the description. I'll see you online.